Let's take a look at an application problem that we see a lot of times when we're studying systems of linear equations. This application problem is called a mixture problem. And what you'll have is somebody who's taking two quantities and they're going to mix them together to create a new substance. Oftentimes, this is a chemistry type problem where they're mixing sulfuric acid or something like that, but really it could be any type of mixture. There, you'll, you'll see this phrased in slightly different ways, but for this example, here's what we have. It says a chemist has two solutions. One is 20% acid and the other is more concentrated is 60% acid. And it says how much of each solution should he mix together to produce 240 milliliters of a solution that's 28% acid, which is somewhere between 20 and 60. So we'll need a little of one and a little of the other, but not just that, we have to actually have just enough to also make it equal 240 total milliliters. So the, the best hint I can give you on how to start these problems is to make a table where each row corresponds to every solution that you'll be dealing with. Solution A, solution B, and a row for the final mixture as well. It makes everything a lot more clear when, when you're working with a table like this. All right, so we've got some information. Um, volume of all these different solutions, A, B, and the mixture. Um, how concentrated they all are, 20%, 60%, and then the mixture is 28%. And then that's gonna give us the volume of acid based off of the different concentrations. So let's see if we can fill in this chart and we'll see how we can get a system out of this thing that ho hopefully we can ultimately solve to answer their question. So let's, let's start with solution A. We'll just fill these in here. How much of solution A, just solution A, do we have? I don't know. The only volume I see is 240 milliliters, but that's of the whole thing. So if I don't know, we'll call this X. The concentration for solution A is 20%, but we'll write that as a decimal, 0 0.2. And the amount of acid will be the volume that we have times the concentration. So if it was 100% acid, you'd multiply it times 100, and, and the whole volume, or times 1 actually, and the whole volume would be acid, but ours is just 20% acid. So when you multiply these, you'll get 0.2. X. That's the volume of just acid that we have in solution A. Same thing for solution B. How much do we have? I, I don't know. Um, it's not necessarily the same as X. It could be a different amount. So let's, let's call it Y. All right, the percent concentration, that's 60%. So we'll say 0 0.6. So the volume of acid will be the volume of the solution times how concentrated it is. So we'll say 0 0.6 times Y. And then what about the total mixture? Well, I do know a little bit about the volume of the total mixture. That was the 240 milliliters. So this is 240. The concentration for the mixture would be 28%, so 0 0.28. And the amount of acid, how much would be in your mixture? Well, it would be same as the other two. It would be 240 times 0 0.28. So here's your table filled out. Now, how can we make a, a system out of this? How can we get some equations out of this thing? Well, one, I, I see this very simple, is look at this column right here. We don't know what X is, we don't know what Y is, but together they must be 240, 240 milliliters. So I think we can write X plus Y equals 240. But that's an equation that has two variables. That's not enough to solve for x and y. If it just had x's or just had y's, we could solve for it, but that's two variables. So let's see if we can find another equation. Um, let's see, the only other place I see variables is over here in the third column. The amount of acid in solution A, the amount of acid in solution B, and the amount of acid in the final mixture. Well, I, I think we can do the same thing. I think we can add the acid from solution A to the uh, amount of acid that we have from solution B and that should equal 240 times 0.28 and what we just made here was a system this is a system of equations two two equations with two unknowns 
and we can solve the system here. And what method we use to solve that system is totally up to you. Um, here I've rewritten it just so we can work on it a little bit. You can use the substitution method if you want. You can use the elimination method or addition method if you want. Um, I wouldn't graph it, but I think one of the other two methods is, is perfectly fine. I think I'll do the substitution method. If, whenever possible, that's usually the easiest. All right, so let's see. First thing I think I'll do is I'll multiply this here. So we'll have 0.2x plus 0.6y equals, we'll take 240 times 0.28. And on your calculator, you'll get 67.2. All right, so let's get rid of this equation because I've just rewritten it. Um, for this one, let's um, solve him for one of the variables, x or y, doesn't really matter. I'll solve it for y. y would equal 240 minus x. So since this is what y is equal to, you can take this expression and plug it in for y right there. Okay, cut and paste. All right, I'll change colors. You'll get 0.2x plus 0.6 times y, whatever y is, equals 67.2. And I'm gonna paste 240 minus x in place of y. All right, this is great, the orange equation just has one variable, it just has x's. So if we can solve for x, we'll be most of the way done with the problem. So let's do simple things like distribute the 0.6 of 0.2x plus, and then we'll have 0 0.6 times 240. We get 144 minus 0.6x equals 67.2. Combine like terms, minus 0.2x minus 0.6x makes minus 0.4x equals, we'll have 67.2 minus 144. That'll give us negative 76.8. Divide both sides by negative 0.4 we'll get 192, and remember the units were in milliliters, milliliters, so 192 milliliters, and that was the amount in solution A. Solution A. And then what about solution B? Well, we call that Y in our chart, so you can use any equation you want. I think probably the easiest to use will probably be this one up here in the corner. So we can find y if we know what x is. So we'll take 240 minus x. Our x is 192. And we'll get 48. 48. So if the chemist mixes 192 milliliters of solution A and 48 milliliters of solution B, then you'll get a total of 240 milliliters. You can easily see that if you add those up. But as an added bonus, the concentration of that mixture, uh, a 20% um, concentration and a 60% concentration, the differing amounts of those, you would end up with a 28% mixture. Now, one thing I find interesting, just as a side note, notice we needed a lot more of the hunt of the solution A, the, the less concentrated solution, the 20% concentration, than we did the 60, probably because the mixture was only supposed to have 28% concentration. So you probably needed a lot more of the 20% concentration than you did of the heavily concentrated 60% solution. So uh, anyways, that's how we solve these mixture problems. So just remember, uh, make a table, 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 table is so important for these guys. Um, use your table to create a system and then solve the system however you want to, um, substitution method or using the addition method.